And we went on to the Nymphenburg Palace with our local guide who walked us through and told us some of the historic highlights of this royal residence. It's like a small Versailles. It just takes one hour to walk through and have a good look. If you're not on a bus tour, you could get here on your own taking tram number 12. And as you can see, it's certainly worth a visit. It's so beautiful built in the style of the palace at Versailles, first constructed back in the 1660s, and it was expanded greatly over the centuries. You want to be sure to get this perspective with the swans gliding by in this perfect pond out in front of the palace. Get your photos, and then we walk around the pond and approach the main palace itself. Nymphenburg was the summer home of the Wittelsbachs, and it makes a great spot for a group photo. The Wittelsbach dynasty was that royal family that ruled the Bavarian area for about 800 years, right up until World War I, when they were booted out and the government took over and turned this into a public museum. The reason that the palace was built was the heir Max Emanuel. He was born in 1662 and one year later the plans were worked out for the middle part. But the decoration you see around here was added about 100 years later in the middle of the 18th century. At that time Max III was reigning and he wanted to use it not only as a dining as a, and a representation hall but also as a concert hall. And that's why you find music instrument above these doorways. The decoration was made by Johann Baptist Zimmermann. He's regarded as the most famous Baroque artist in Bavaria. And this was his last work. Zimmermann was already 76 year, years old when he painted the ceiling painting. He painted like Michelangelo, you might have heard this. He was lying on his back for about 10 months to complete the ceiling painting. Now this is already the continuation of the Baroque. You see that typical ornament for Rococo. Rococo was not a new style. As I said, it was the continuation of the Baroque and came from the French word rocaille, and that means shell-like ornament. It's a typical Baroque palace. On the right-hand side lived the, uh, the men, and on the left-hand side the woman. So this here was now a kind of waiting room. It's not as beautifully decorated as the one on the opposite side. On the painting you see here Karl Albrecht. He became German emperor in 1745. Karl Albrecht had 32 illegitimate children. On the ceiling, these are all paintings from the year 1675. That means these paintings are much older than the United States. They have been painted with natural colors. But if you think that they are older than 300 years old and have never been repainted, only cleaned, then I think it's not bad, is it? Yeah. The brightest one is in the next room of all these ceiling paintings. Now here the bedroom. The bed had a special function in the 18th century. You know the elector at that time, we haven't had kings yet. They sit, set him in, into bed with the wigs powdered and the cushions around him. And then the ministers showed up and they got their orders from bed. So this is called the blue saloon. The furniture looks very different than of what we have seen before. The furniture here was a present by Napoleon to the first Bavarian King Max. In that last little room over there, that's where King Ludwig II was born on the 25th of August 1845. This is the main attraction of Nymphenburg Palace, the beauty gallery of King Ludwig I. It became so very famous because for the first time every social rank was portrayed. And not only ladies from the court. When the king saw a beautiful girl, he asked her and had her painted. The collection was started in 1827. All the paintings were painted by the same master. His name is Karl Stieler. And very often they said nothing good of the girls after they were painted because King Ludwig I was famous for starting some hanky-panky business with the girls. Very often it's regarded as the most beautiful one. Now she was only 17 years old when she was painted. The king was very much in love with her and wrote her a lot of poems, but she was really not interested. And now Marie of uh, Bavaria, she is the mother of King Ludwig II. Her name is Nanette Kaula. She was uh, regarded as the most beautiful Jewish person in her days. On top, the Archduchess Sophie, and she is the mother of the very famous French Joseph of Austria. And the most famous one of the collection, and every guide uh, finishes with her, it's Lola Montes. He was 61 and she was 27. 
and she became the proper girlfriend. I mean, this was nothing special. She had so many girlfriends before, but in her case, it was different because it ended up that the king did everything she said. And the revolution started because of her. And if you know the story, Lola wants, Lola gets, that was her. Now, she was the, uh, the reason that King Ludwig I abdicated. By the way, she always said she was Spanish. She was not. She was Irish, and her name was Eliza Gilbert. And let's finish with her. <laughs> it really does help to have a guide bring you through a place like that. That's why it's nice to come along with a group, an escorted group with a tour guide. You learn a lot about the history and you don't have to do much research. You can just come along and listen and look and learn something as you go. Makes the trip all that much more enjoyable. Well, the palace is worth seeing and we've brought you in there. And today we're going behind the palace into the beautiful French formal gardens. First built in the Italian style and then redesigned and rebuilt over the centuries into a formal French garden style. There are fountains and ponds back here that are really worth a look. And we're going through the forest to find the hunting lodge. It's just a couple of hundred yards walk. It's a lovely stroll. And that will take us into a Millionberg hunting lodge. It was designed in the Rococo style that our guide will explain back in 1734. A hunting lodge for the Prince Elector. At that time, an Italian painted white and blue, varying colors. And these niches are for the dogs. It's a hunting lodge. So the architect uh, choose three colors, light blue, yellow and silver. The chandeliers come from Venice. This is typical for Rococo architecture. This is wood, linden wood, and then um, silver. <coughs> and they made something so this will never turn black. And now typical for Rococo time, they didn't want to have corners, so all the churches, all the palaces around are open. Mm. And this room was used for concerts or for a little reception. This was only used for evening. It's like a mini hall of mirrors right out of Versailles. Extremely beautiful Rococo decoration. Even the kitchen is a work of art with these ceramic wall tiles. It's not a large building to walk through, so it's very easy to appreciate the beauties of Amalienburg. So when you go out to visit Nymphenburg Palace, be sure to have a stroll in the gardens and walk through the trees for a couple hundred yards. Very nice nature walk. And you'll come across that Amalienburg Hunting Lodge, one of the prettiest little hunting lodges in all of Germany.